Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Boss, and this is a breakdown of the ending and post credit scenes for Blue Beetle. Spoilers ahead. Audiences are leaving this movie with a ton of questions, like what happened to Ted Kord? Are these characters gonna be part of the DCU going forward? Did the alien scarab actually climb into Jaime's butt? We will attempt to answer two of those questions here today. A reminder that New Rockstars is three channels. Please subscribe to all three. The Break Room's gonna have a great review of this movie, and Tag After has informed us that entertainment journalists like us are allowed to review movies like this. We support the actors and writers in their strike. Okay, Blue Beetle tells the story of aimless college grad Jaime Reyes, played by Joe Lamar Duena. He's moving back home from Gotham to Palermo City, a fictional Miami-inspired locale created for the film. While on a job interview at Cord Industries, he gets caught up in a corporate espionage plot and becomes the host to an alien scarab that grants him a suit of armor, and many different sizes of swords, and the ability to absolutely annihilate buses. Jaime and his family become targets of Victoria Cord, played by Susan Sarandon. She's CEO of the mega corporation, once led by her brother Ted Cord, before he mysteriously disappeared. She's after the scarab to create a new source of green energy. Just kidding, she's making super soldiers. This is a comic book movie, so it's always going to be super soldiers, right? Also looking for the scarab is Ted's daughter, Jenny Cord. She wants to save her father's legacy and maybe smooch with Jaime. During a raid that kills Jaime's father, he is taken to Victoria's compound where the plan is to kill him, get the scarab, and put its power into Carpax, a bruiser of few words who takes occasional longing glances at a locket. Jaime's family mounts a rescue operation using Ted Cord's old tech they found in his secret lair. He has a secret lair because he was formerly the Blue Beetle, a superhero that defended Palermo City in the 80s before disappearing. While hooked up to Victoria's death machine, Jaime connects with his deceased father in the spirit realm, merges consciousness with the scarab, then wrecks shop while his sister punches dudes with a modified Nintendo Power Glove, and his grandma fires a chain gun while dropping hints about her revolutionary past. Jaime and Carpax fight, but just as Jaime is about to deliver the final blow, the scarab shows him Carpax's tragic past as a child soldier who was used and manipulated by Victoria. Jaime spares Carpax, who grabs Victoria and self-destructs while the Reyes family escapes. We don't see Victoria or Carpax die, but the explosion is ridiculously huge, so I'm guessing they didn't survive, but they could could always be back because comic book movies. After Jaime's dad's funeral, Jenny pledges to rebuild the Reyes' destroyed house. Jaime's uncle gets a sweet new product place Toyota Tacoma, and Jenny and Jaime do some long-awaited smooching. Finally, the two of them blast off, probably destroy more buses. In our mid credit scene, we see the Cord Mansion and move into Ted's Blue Beetle lair. One of his many screens glitches out, and we see a mega pixelated version of Ted Cord. It turns out when Jaime's uncle Rudy turned on Ted's computer, it sent him some kind of signal. Ted is pleading for someone to find Jenny and tell her that he's alive, no actors listed for this voice cameo, and the only other time we see Ted is a family portrait painted in a conveniently abstract style. There were some rumors that Jason Sudeikis was playing him, but those have been debunked. As far as we know, no actor has been cast to play Ted Cord in any future DC projects. The post credit scene is mainly for comedy. We see some scenes in the stop motion Spanish language cartoon for Jaime's uncle Rudy broadcasted into Cord Industries during the raid. The cartoon is an homage to El Chapula in Colorado, or the Red Cricket, a comedy superhero that appeared on TV in the 70s in Latin American countries. A Chapulín is a really an edible grasshopper, so it's not that intimidating, but he is more agile than a turtle, stronger than a mouse, and nobler than a lettuce. So where was Ted Cord transmitting from? Remember how old cell phones were giant cumbersome bricks, and now we have nice sleek ones that fit easily in our pockets? Well, wallets are the same way. So say goodbye to your bulky wallet of yesteryear and say hello to Ridge. Ridge has reinvented the wallet, and it is a massive improvement over the ginormous overstuffed wallets that we all grew up with. The Ridge wallet is slim, but expands to hold up to 12 cards plus cash. Ridge wallets come in over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber, burnt titanium, forged ember, and burnt Damascus. Each wallet is built with RFID blocking materials that protect your info from digital pickpockets and has an optional AirTag attachment so you'll never lose your wallet again. Ridge has 80,000 five-star reviews, and each wallet comes with a lifetime warranty. The Ridge team is so confident that you'll like your wallet that they'll let you test drive it for 99 days. And if you don't love it, send it back for a full refund. And from now until September 30th, with every dollar spent on the website before, you'll be entered to win a brand new upgraded Ford Bronco. Or if you prefer cash, you can take $75,000 instead. The winner will be announced in October. Enter for your chance to win and get 10 bonus entries by going to my link, ridge.com slash new rockstars and use my code new rockstars for 10% off your order. We've seen the DCU multiverse break open in the flash, so it's possible that he traveled to one of the realities we saw in that movie. My guess is that he's stuck in another time. In the comics, the Ted Cord Blue Beetle is best bros slash teammate with Booster Gold. Booster Gold was a football star in the 25th century who hit rock bottom when he got involved in some shady gambling. Then he got his hand on some advanced tech, most prominently an AI robot named Skeets, and traveled back to the 20th century where he became a hero and member of the Justice League International. Booster and Ted broed down, became repo men, owned a casino, and in the recent Blue and Gold series, became social media stars for live streaming their crime fighting. They also have, on a number of occasions, traveled through time and messed crap up. The director has said in interviews that they considered Booster Gold cameo in their post credit scene, but they ended up just going with the scrambled core 
Cord message instead. Booster Gold series has been announced as part of James Gunn's new DCU, so it would make sense that Ted Cord would be part of that series in some way. No casting has been announced for that show, but the longest time fans were theorizing that Nathan Fillion had the right combination of square jawed hunkiness and comedy chops to play Booster. He's actually going to be playing another one of DC's ego driven himbos, Lantern Guy Gardner, in the upcoming Superman Legacy. It's not a long shot to think that Beetle and Booster got lost in the time stream somehow and are just trying to find their way back. If you have some guesses about Ted's whereabouts, let us know in the comments. Speaking of James Gunn's new DCU, is this movie Blue Beetle part of it? Or is it part of the Snyderverse? Or is it some other pocket of the multiverse? Batman, Superman, and The Flash are all mentioned in the movie, but none of them are explicitly shown, so we don't really know what versions of them the characters are referring to. Is there Batman Ben Affleck or Battinson or Michael Keaton? This movie was originally supposed to debut on Max after the scrapped Batgirl, where Michael Keaton would be playing Batman. So maybe that was supposed to take place in the Keaton Bat universe, 89. The director has said that the original cut of the movie was about half an hour longer, so that might have included some specific references to Batgirl that were cut when that movie was scrapped. James Gunn has said on social media that Jolie Marduena will be part of the DCU moving forward. That's kind of the vague answer we've been getting about who will and who won't be part of the DCU moving forward. The most obvious answer is that probably they're waiting to see what connects with audiences. If Blue Beetle's a hit, they'll definitely pump out sequels that shuttle the characters around to cameo in other movies and streaming shows. If it's not a hit, that involvement will probably be more minor. As far as the Blue Beetle film goes, this movie was just so much fun and has tons of heart, so I hope that we see not only Jaime Reyes again, but his warm and hilarious family in some form or another. Again, please subscribe to all three channels on our network and you can follow me at EA Voss. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.